when the Beechcraft King Air 360 entered service in 2020, followed by the Beechcraft King Air 260 in 2021, both models came with a big upgrade, a new digital pressurization system. And we're here to give you a tour of just that system today. My name is Nelson Washington. And I'm Kim Burton. We're from your Texron Aviation customer service team. And today we're gonna to talk about the interfaces, components, and troubleshooting of your new system. Before we start, I'd like to state that the content of this presentation is for reference only and does not contain instructions for continued airworthiness. The approved procedures in their entirety are set out in approved technical publications. If you're used to the King Air 350i, it will be easy to recognize when you're in the new King Air 360 cockpit. There are no indicators for flat position or cabin altitude here. There are no pressurization controller in the pedestal. These are the same changes that are in the King Air 260. With the new digital system, the cabin altitude, rate, and differential pressure are on the fusion display. The flight crew will set up their flight plan and the landing field elevation is from the database. You can manually enter a destination through the system summary page. Manual entry is only if, if the destination airport is not in your FMS, but here's how to do it. Your MFD will be in the split screen configuration. Add system to a quarter screen. Choose summary from the pull down. From here you can check manual and set the destination altitude. If your next destination is in the FMS, be sure to uncheck manual so that it's back to automatic before your next flight. These instructions are in the pilot operating handbook refer to the system description chapter on the avionics couple cabin pressure control system. The avionics <clears throat> system sends this information on a 429 bus to your remote mounted pressurization controller. It's now in the back of the airplane, so let's go see it. Here we are in the cabin by the aft bulkhead. This area normally is covered by floorboards. Now here is the pressurization controller as well as our outflow valves. The pressurization controller has its own internal sensor to detect cabin pressure. It compares its own cabin pressure to the fusion system's destination and aircraft altitude, then makes cabin altitude adjustments. It makes those adjustments by pulling the outflow valves open. There are two valves for redundancy, so they are identical. There's no longer a designated safety valve. Now here we've also added a reverse pressure relief valve. If we lose bleed airflow, pressurization will drop and air will be trying to get inside the cabin. And when that happens, this will open. This prevents negative pressure in the cabin. In addition to the controller, we've added some new independent PC boards for display and monitoring. Here by the door, we have the A525 cabin altitude PCB. This transmits Airing 429 for Collins for the cabin pressure indication, rate, and differential pressure calculations. To access this, you'll remove the left-hand lower sidewall panel. And on the other side, we have the Alpha 526 cabin altitude module. Now don't worry, you don't have to take apart the entire interior to get to this. Just pull down the upper panel behind the aft lab. It's just forward of the stub partition. Now this detects the actual cabin altitude and sends it over to the 429 PCB we just talked about. And it has a discrete output to the fusion system for the cabin altitude high cast message. That's a red warning message that you'll see if the cabin altitude is over established limits. That red message normally comes on at 10,000 feet, but the system does have high altitude mode and special missions configurations. And the limit is not something you normally see anyway, just in case. Let's talk through some troubleshooting. When it comes to pressurization systems, we say every airplane needs three things to pressurize. Air comes in through the bleed air inflow system. Air is held in by the fuselage. Air is let out through the outflow valves. Our pressure vessel and inflow systems haven't changed for the 360. So if cabin pressure is too low, that means cabin altitude is too high. And we're gonna look at the same things we always have. If you call our customer service helpline and say my cabin altitude is too high, we're gonna ask for your cabin leak rate. Check doors, seals, windows, and for leakage in or around the outflow valves themselves. If we know the cabin is holding air, 
we'll check bleed air inflow. Now, if it's way too low, oxygen masks drop for your passengers and crew to get oxygen. This is controlled with barrel switches and not PCBs. The barrel switches are similar to the 350i with just a new part number. They drop the mass at 14,000 feet and not 12.5. These are totally independent from the indication and monitoring components that we talked about earlier. If cabin pressure is too high, cabin altitude is too low. That means you're in an altitude where there's not much air outside. And what happens if there's a lot in here and not much out there? You get positive differential pressure. Now the first indication that you see that you're up against differential pressure limits is the cabin diff high cast message. Now most likely scenario for this is an outflow valve not regulating pressure by opening at the right times. Maybe the controller can't open it. It draws the valve open with a vacuum. If there's a leak in the plumbing, it can't do that. If the issue is with the controller itself, the controller stops providing active control to the outflow valves and pressure in the control lines remains constant. The safety limiters in the outflow valves will maintain cabin pressure, and there are two new cast messages to tell you about possible controller issues. The pressurization controller does a self-check every power up and presents a press control fail message for issues. That's based on a bit check. You'll hear it activate its internal pumps when it runs this on power up. There's also check maintenance, which is a ground only collector message. It's triggered by several things, FDR fail, display faults, and now it comes up when the pressurization controller isn't receiving its 429 input from Collins. Remember, the controller continuously gets data from the Fusion. It's gonna echo that back that it's okay. If the Fusion system does not receive that echo, it puts up check maintenance. You can get to your diagnostics information through your Fusion maintenance screen. On the MFD, select maintenance as one of your split screen options. Make sure you're in advanced mode. Go to LRU operations and make sure you're in chapter 21, environmental and air conditioning systems. The data reader will show you the option for your LRU CPC1 and label 270. Refer to your aircraft maintenance manual to interpret this diagnostics information. We've learned about some new components today. Rather than a pedestal mounted pressurization controller, the Beechcraft King Air 260 and 360 have a remote mounted controller interface with your Collins Fusion system. And the indications and monitors are from the independent PCB and module in the sidewalls. If you have any more questions, send us an email. We're team turboprop at techstab.com. I'd love to hear what you think or hear your suggestions for more video topics. And we really appreciate you joining us today. Thank you.